Hello, Oscillator Sync here. Korg have just dropped the version 2 firmware for the OP6, and it is a doozy, I have to say. Uh, what have they done? Well, uh, they've introduced some new uh, noise flavors for the wave. So we have pink and blue noise there. Uh, so pink is a bit darker and blue is sort of band passed up high. So you lose some of the low end energy that's inherent in white noise. It's actually a really useful thing to have, actually. Uh, so I welcome that. Maybe not the most exciting headline feature, but it's, it's all good. Uh, they've improved some of the uh, way that you can route um, aftertouch around the patches. So if, you, if you have a keyboard which supports uh, aftertouch, that's going to be really, really interesting to play with. They've increased the number of patches, which is good. They improved some of the MIDI sync stuff. But let's be honest, the headline feature and the one that I want to talk about today is that they have introduced a new operator mode, the effect operator. And this is really very exciting. So the effects operator is kind of interesting because you have this effects selector parameter here, and this allows you to select one of 10 different effects to sit on your operator. And what's interesting about that is that actually changes the functionality of the rest of the operator. So actually really what we've got here is not one new operator uh, mode, but actually 10 uh, because they all operate in different ways. And that's really, really exciting. Um, the way that it's set up is something like uh, the filter and the wave shaper, the wave folder, um, I should say, uh, modes in that we have this oscillator mix control, which allows us to mix in the waveform for this operator's oscillator uh, in varying amounts. Uh, so that means this can create its own sounds with the oscillator mix turned up, or we can turn the oscillator mix to zero and the effect will just be applied to any incoming operator, the modulator, if you like, that sits above this carrier. And that's how I'm going to demo the different effects today. Um, so uh, I'm just on uh, algorithm one on initialize patch. Operator one is our effects and operator two is just a, an FM, um, but it's just like basically working like an oscillator at the moment that we can run through the various different effects. So um, let's uh, run through how each of these effects actually operate because they all do different things and they all work in different ways. So the first effect we've got here is a peaking EQ. So uh, operator one is our effects operator, operator two is just a sawtooth running through it and we have the oscillator mix turned down on operator one so we're just hearing its effect on the incoming operator. So uh, the peaking EQ is a single band uh, uh, semi-parametric EQ. Uh, so there's it with uh, the gain turned down. As we turn the gain up, we can boost frequencies or we can turn the gain down and, and cut them. So this can be useful for thinning sounds out to get different flavors of rich waveforms or we can boost things to get more of a honky kind of sound. Now what's interesting about the way that this is set up is the frequency uh, like it is on the filter operator is actually going to be tied to the pitch of um, the operator. So you can kind of hear that the emphasis here has been shifted around. Uh, maybe if we change our incoming oscillator just to some white noise, we'll be able to hear it better. You can kind of hear that, um, let me turn the gain a bit more. That frequency is kind of tracking the keyboard there, which means that any sort of um, uh, boost that or cut that we set up is going to be relative to where we play it on the keyboard by default. That's the saw again. So the kind of resonance that we're setting up there is going to be moving around uh, with that, which is cool. Uh, if we want to decouple that in the same way as we do on the um, filter mode, we can come into the pitch menu for operator one. Now uh, we can turn it over to fixed and that's going to give us um, a filter, sorry, a, uh, an EQ which isn't going to be moving around. And we can sweep that EQ around using operator one's pitch now. So it's kind of a slightly different flavor to um, 
uh, uh, the bandpass filter or the band reject filter. Uh, but we can do similar sort of um, jobs there. Uh, because this is uh, going to be related to the pitch, we can also, of course, modulate the pitch and have that filter, uh, sorry, that EQ frequency move around. So, for example, we stick LFO 1 on it. Which is kind of an interesting sound that, especially with the Especially with the boost there where we can get sort of more sort of wah-wah sounds than you would maybe get with the band pass. Certainly something that is uh, interesting to play about with, but let's uh, set that back off, set that back to ratio. And let's check out the next mode. So the next effects mode that we have here is the shelving EQ. So another EQ here, uh, and this is just a straight up high and low um, shelving EQ. So we can boost the lows. We can boost the highs. Get like a big hi-fi sounding sawtooth. Pretty interesting, or we can indeed cut stuff as well, at the, uh, maybe cut stuff at the low end, maybe boost high a little bit, get more of a reedy kind of sound. So um, this is actually kind of an alternative to having to deal with the filter operator type uh, if you're trying to get sort of more shaped sounds. Uh, so like using the bandpass filter on the, um, uh, on the filter type to get sort of more reedy sounds we have now have an alternative to that which really is slightly more um controllable like we couldn't get this sort of bright but thin sound using that um obviously the more complex incoming uh Waveform you have the, the more sort of scope you'll get for this, but for like here, we could sort of warm up the sawtooth before it got to anything else. Um, so certainly nice to have, um, not the necessarily the most exciting one, but uh, you know, why, why disagree with utility, I think. So I'm uh, glad it's there. Um, certainly for sort of pre-shaping sounds, that's gonna be uh, pretty interesting. This is probably one of the modes uh, along with the uh, peak filter where it probably makes more sense to uh, maybe use it on an internal oscillator as well so turning up the oscillator mix so that you can just shape the sound of this operator instead anyway uh, let's move on to the next one right so the next uh, effects type here is phaser mm -mm, okay so let's uh, take a listen you might be thinking to yourself if you know what a phaser Sounds like that doesn't sound very phasery to me at the moment. It is different to the previous effects. You kind of got that hollow resonance that you get with a phaser, but it's not like all swampy and lovely like you would maybe expect uh, with a phaser sound. And the reason for this is that this uh, effect, again, operates a little bit like the filter uh, operator mode in that the frequency is tied to the pitch of the operator. Now at the moment, and we're in ratio mode and nothing is moving this frequency control around except for the fact that's actually in a different place for each key that we uh, are playing uh, and if we start to modulate even by hand the frequency you might start to hear that phaser sound that you might expect. If we want to make that happen automatically, of course, we can come into our pitch control and start to modulate uh, the pitch with an LFO. Maybe slow it down a little bit. And it's sounding a bit more um, phrase -y. There's something about it which is a bit weird though if you were thinking about this as a phaser effect um, altogether and that is that the operator is currently in ratio mode which means that the center frequency for each of the notes that I'm playing is actually different uh, so it doesn't have that 
quite same swampy feel to it, but we can change that by simply changing our frequency mode from ratio to fixed. Now everything here is starting to sound a bit more um, phasery. Now at the moment I have this set up, uh, my LFO that's modulating the pitch of this operator set up in common mode, which means that for a particular chord that I'm playing, the LFOs will all be synced. If I change that over to voice or off, we'll go with voice. Each of the notes that I play now essentially has its own phaser applied, which is really, really cool. Um, if we come back into the mode here, we also have another control here for feedback, and that's going to give us a more accentuated, more vocal and swampy uh, feel to the sound. Um, I love having all of those phases separate for each voice. That's, that's super cool. We also have negative uh, feedback here, which gives us a different flavor. More sort of yo yo y rather than e yo yo. And of course, we can push that into audio rate as well for. Really cool. And the nice thing here, and I think this is the first um, of the effects modes that we can really sort of talk about this. The nice thing here is that this is only being applied to this chain of operators here, which means we can now blend in other operators that don't have the effect on it. Is, which is a, a really nice thing to do. And as we go through and look at some of these other effects types, there's going to be other situations where being able to apply the effect only to one part of your voice, one part of the patch, rather than it being a master effect, is incredibly powerful. It allows you to do stuff that you simply can't, couldn't do on the previous updates. So here we've got that phaser sound. And we can blend in a dry operator to get a bit more clarity to it. Super cool. Yeah, so phaser, really, really interesting. And and actually, uh, you know, even if we um, go back to the ratio mode here and get rid of our LFO, having the feedback turn up a bit more so we get a bit more character to it. get a different different feel to that sound that's still a useful sound shaping um, tool that we now have as well right uh, next effect is the short delay uh, for this I might just uh, extend our envelopes a little bit so that the delay has time to play out a bit more there we go I'll do so um, short delay is kind of what it sounds like. It's a short delay. And we have controls for time. And for feedback. And that feedback goes to 100%. Which would essentially keep going for as long as the envelope would play out as well. So again, um, just to highlight this, this point, this is not a global effect that's applied to the entire patch. So for example, we can change the pitch of, uh, sorry, not of that one, uh, of our operator two that we're hearing. Go up a couple of octaves and then. Mix in a different operator that isn't being affected by that delay. Very nice. 
Um, the time goes very short. So we can use this to get kind of resonator sounds as well. And this time can be modulated. It's not tied to the pitch of the uh, operator in this case, which is slightly inconvenient, I guess. Um, so we'd have to go into the V patch to modulate it, but we could come back um, to source, maybe just grab our LFO, destination, op one, and we can come across, we now have all of the effects stuff that's um, controllable here. So short delay time here. You might want to try to make that as small as possible. To get kind of, <laughs> I don't know how useful that is, uh, to get kind of sick sounds there. Changing the time here might give us more useful ranges. <laughs> Again, this is uh, not a global effect. Like I said, I don't know how you saw that uh, sound in particular is going to be, uh, but it's uh, nice to know that we have access to it. Now, as soon as I saw that we had a delay here, I was thinking to myself, oh my God, can we do Carpless Strong stuff with this? Can we modulate the time so that it tracks the keyboard? And the answer is no, not really. Uh, you can sort of try and set it up here with the uh, V patch by going to keyboard note delay time here. And we can certainly have it move around, but it doesn't track properly past a certain point. This is probably more interesting sound than the previous one. Where that resonance has been changed per key. But never fear, we do have an alternative if we want to try and do some string synthesis and it's next. So the next effect that we have access to is a comb filter. Now a comb filter, uh, it's described as a filter and Korg describe it as such in the, um, uh, in the manual. But what is important about a comb filter is that it's really a delay. Okay. So what are the controls here? Well, we have frequency, which is going to be the frequency of the comb filter. And you can, uh, if I just go, if I just turn the effect uh, off for a second, that's without it. And you can kind of hear there's kind of a, a resonance to it here. Um, so we have a, f a well, we'll start with the feedback controller actually. The feedback controller is, uh, is basically a feedback of a very, very short delay, and that's how you get your comb filtering. And as you turn this up, you'll hear more of the effect of the comb filter, and it's sort of resonating away there. Uh, and then we also have a frequency control, which changes our delay time, which gives us different resonances. Cool, right? Uh, the frequency control is defined in semitones, so we can have it related to the note that we're playing, or we can maybe do it like a fifth up or something. Really, really interesting sounds straight off the bat, but you're probably thinking to yourself, that sounds like it's resonating like a string. Uh, and that's what I thought as soon as I uh, heard it. So what we can do, if I can <laughs> contain my excitement for a second, if we come over to our incoming operator here and we'll maybe change this over to one of our uh, noise sources, maybe the blue noise, and... Right. Suddenly, that noise is not pitched. If I turn down, if I come back to operator one and turn down the feedback here. 
that noise is not fixed. What's happening is that the frequency control like it is on the filter and a number of the other effects here is tied to the pitch of the operator. So if we set our pitch to fixed, that resonator that resonate is staying in the same place, but in ratio, it's tracking things. What this means is, um, for example, if we come into our incoming operator here and we change its envelope to be very short and plucky, bit quiet, um, we have to boost the, the sound somehow. Uh, maybe we'll just pop a, where are we? The master limiter here, to hear a bit better. We have some string synthesis here. And I'll just leave this patch just for a second uh, to go back to something that I was working on just before I started this video. Another patch uh, just here uh, where I've done a bit more. Yes, that's right, Korg have gifted us uh, physical modeling in the OP6. Goodness me. Um, if you're interested in a patch walkthrough of a patch like this, then let me know in the comments. Uh, but this made me very, very happy this morning to discover that I could do this. So the comb filter, great for setting up these sort of resonances, which will track the keyboard. And yes, you can use it to uh, emulate a string in a basic way. Um, fantastic stuff. So through the magic of editing, I've moved back to a uh, well triangle wave in this case. And we're going to go over to the next uh, effect here, which is distortion, uh, which does what it sounds like, it's going to distort things. Um, so this is actually a triangle wave, believe it or not, but you can hear that it's got quite a bit of distortion to it, but the distortion is actually down at zero at the moment, so there's a lot more that we could do here. Now, the important thing about the distortion mode and, and a number of the other modes here is to bear in mind that it's going to be level dependent. So we don't necessarily want to push the whole of operator two through it at all times. So by altering the level there, we're actually getting um, a tonal shift. That's massive, isn't it? So if we come into operator two and uh, change its uh, envelope to sweep in a bit more, because the effect is uh, level dependent, that distortion is generating more harmonics uh, the higher that level gets. And then at the end they're letting it die down as well. So in uh, this, uh, actually let's just check that, change that back to, so in this operator mode, we have a distortion control, which does more distortion. And it gets pretty intense. And then we have a low control, which I think is pre-distortion, or at least in the distortion. Because it does affect the character of the distortion as well as changing the low end response. But Oh, I've still got the um, limiter on there, haven't I? Let's turn that off. Yeah, so we've got quite a lot of different ways of shaping the wave here. And these two are very interactive, as it is with the level as well. sounds that are available to us here. Very nice. The next mode is um, similar in that it's a drive. It has the same sort of um, controls here. 
what it does however is a lot more sort of gentle so this doesn't suddenly not sound like a triangle so much it's still level dependent but it's a lot less angry so whereas the distortion is more of an effect this is just kind of like a bit of a shaper to the sound the interesting thing is um, if we push in a more harmonically rich sound like a saw so there's a couple of sweet spots in here where it sort of fattens and makes it more cutting what does that look like on the analyzer yeah so we're kind of becoming like a squarey sort of sawtooth friend uh, and then again we've got that low control it's, it's pretty big and again timbre of this is still going to be level dependent but a lot less so than the uh, distortion but yeah again just to uh, keep mentioning it but I think it's important to highlight this is not a master effect so we can blend in other things which are um, not being affected by this drive it's a really nice sort of sweetener in a way that you can get different um, different wave sounds uh, Again, this is probably one of the effects that makes use would make more sense to make use of the oscillator mix maybe than some of the other ones. Cool. And of course we can make it thinner as well. Yeah, so that's just a really useful sweetener or a rougher upper. Um, uh, that you can put it up across part of your patch and not the rest of it. Yeah, really cool. Okay, uh, next up we have a decimator. I'm just going to switch operator 2 back to being a triangle for this. So it'll make it sound more obvious. Uh, so this is a bit reducer and um, a f uh, sample rate reducer. So straight away we have that. If we just go back to our drive. We have that lovely glistening, bit reduced, um, frequency reduced, not bit reduced so much at the moment, but frequency reduced sound. So um, controls here, we have a bit reduction, which is gonna crunchify things as we get lower. Um, we can also use this again is going to be one of the um, effects here which is going to be dependent on level as well you can hear especially when you've got the bit reduction down really low as operator 2's um, uh, level drops off it almost creates a stuttering effect in fact if we come into operator 2 and give it a bit of a because we're dealing with fewer discrete points where this is being sampled we get this cool st stuttering uh, with the bits set low. Um, if we turn it up, we don't get that so much. It's a bit smoother. We still get that sort of roughing of the sound all the way down to two bits, which is just going to turn on <laughs> when it gets high enough, which is um, quite amusing. Uh, so the frequency is a, a sample rate reducer. This is going to be tied to the pitch of the operator again. So actually the frequency decimation that's happening here is going to be different on different notes. Which is quite interesting because it maintains uh, the relationship between the ringingness of the decimation and the note that's been played. As always, if we want to decouple that, we can come into our pitch control and switch that to fixed. 
So now that frequency uh, decimation is going to be the same and it's just going to be related to whatever we set this fixed frequency to. But, you know, th this is great for sort of uh, getting those bit tuny sounds on the go. It's a bit, bit too uh, decimated, I think. Uh, that's... Uh, so we can do our chip tune stuff now, which is good. And again, there was already a decimator in the effects section, but this is now going to be separate to um, everything else in here. And I was playing with a patch earlier where I put a little bit of um, no, no, a little bit of pitch wobble on operator two, uh, a bit faster. Then mixed in a it's not applied to the entire patch it's just applied to the operators flowing through the effect so we can mix in unaffected sounds as well which is fantastic, just a lovely um, aspect to the sound design that uh, we have had access to previously. Lovely. Okay, next effect. And this is the one that I wasn't entirely sure about until I started playing with it, and it's fantastic. Um, so this is the Wave Shaper. So this is from um, the uh, 01W workstation that Korg brought out in the early, early 90s. And I was just like, okay, well, I'm not sure whether I want stuff from a um, early 90s workstation. Call me a snob if you like, but that's the way I felt. Uh, but that's because I didn't understand what this was. And this is actually really, really fantastic. So, so what does the Wave Shaper do? Well, in essence, it's another flavor of wave folding, but wave folding that is um, not necessarily uh, uniform in the way that it applies its folding. So the first thing to note here is that this is incredibly uh, input level dependent and there are a lot of different timers that we can get from it by uh, changing how much of the uh, modulator that we're pushing into this effects carrier, if you like. So um, I'm just going to uh, give us a bit more of a... Hello. Um, <laughs> a little, little bit more of a, of a decay there uh, so that we can play with this a little bit more. So uh, what's going on here? Well, we have two controls here. We have a damp control, which is basically just a top end roll off, which for some of these sounds is going to be really, really useful. Uh, and then we have a type and there's, uh, I think it's like 40 types or something. There's a, there's a lot of them basically. And these are all, you can think of them as different flavors of wave folding. And some of them do very, very particular things that you couldn't really do with a conventional wave folder. So um, just as a reminder, this is just a triangle wave that's going into this effect at the moment. So if I play a note, let's just get rid of that pitch wobble as well, just for a second, as lovely as it is. As I turn up this level, you can hear that we're getting all sorts of different flavors. And if we look at the uh, analyzer here, we can see like a kind of kinky wave folder thing going on here and that's giving us all of those different sounds and by um, uh, changing the level coming in here so for example if we give it a um, give operator to an attack here we can get some very very interesting sounds and remember we don't have to have operator 2 on full here so if we don't like what's happening right at the top there, we don't have to have it. I think some of these sounds are really, really interesting. Now I won't go through every single type here because there's a bunch of them, as I say, but just 
as an example. I mean, how different is that one? That one's like the other one, but smoother. Almost like a fake sync sound going on there. And again, because these are level dependent, um, if we chain, if we make uh, this operator, um, so get rid of the uh, attack, then if we make this react to velocity, this particular one is pretty <laughs> pretty crazy. Uh, play lightly, we get. And again, we have this damp control if we don't like some of the high-end artifacts that are here. But they're just... I mean... <laughs> right? <laughs> is it just me? But is this amazing? Uh, and, and, and because uh, I don't quite know what the algorithm that's, that's doing this at the back end, but... They alias, I assume that the, the folder has a particular sample rate to it. But like at the top, you get all these insane aliasing things, which isn't going to be applicable to every patch, of course not. But yeah, um, there was one here that I really liked called Forest, I think it was. Uh, where are we? Here we go. It's very uh, 90s, I think. I think that might be why I like it. If we stick some uh, reverb on it, uh, let's go with the smooth. Uh, so just all of these different flavors of wave folding. Not, they're not all as intense. And some of them are more like um, clippers. There's one to do with... Uh... Some of them come across like uh, filters or they almost sound like... Um... Some of them sound like the Casio CZ series as well. So there was one hit. Is this one? All like filters, but. Some of the sounds are quite of their time, I guess, but uh, nevertheless. Um... Yeah, so, I mean, just scanning through those, you can hear how many different uh interesting sounds we can get there and this has just made me wonder and i just need to check can that be modulated in the uh please tell me that can be modulated ah oh, that's a shame <laughs> i thought that one might, that parameter might be able to be, be modulated uh, never mind that would be amazing if each note that you played could be a different one of those anyway yeah so the, the wave shape is like uh, uh an extra wave folder with a bunch of different very particular frequency dependent level dependent stuff going on there 
gets a bit aliased at the top end on some of them it can be a bit extreme when you push the operator into it fully but maybe you don't need to do that um and uh yeah i can see myself using this a lot in pad sounds and, and the like um yeah um didn't expect to, to think this one was was so amazing but it's probably my second favorite after the comb um yeah brilliant stuff right then last effect here and we have punch now i have to say out of all of them this is the one which i'm least certain about because it feels like you can uh, uh, get this effect other ways i, I don't know i don't know whether i'm missing something i'll explain what it does um basically it will as you turn up the punch control accentuate the front end let's go to the uh, reverb there accentuate the front end of the note and the reason i don't entirely understand what i don't understand the point of this as much is that you can do this with um with an envelope as well and just having a, a short um, a short decay and, and, a, and a drop to a lower sustain. I guess uh, this is probably level dependent a little bit, but or rather level independent. So it's kind of like the the, the attack part of a transient designer. What you also then have here is a high control, which can get a bit aggressively clicky with everything turned up to full. So I guess. That's a quick way to get from that to to that, but um, as I say, uh, there are other ways of of doing the same thing. I think. Um, I guess one of the things that you could do is um, modulate the punch amount by the velocity, and that might be a. a quick and easy way to to get more attack out of a note because otherwise you'd have to mess around with um uh mess around with uh the uh routing the envelopes and, and, and the like so if we come into the v patch here we can go keyboard velocity goes to operator one uh punch amount turn that intensity up and then as i play harder we get more front end of the note so that's probably a good use for it, I think. Having it linked to the velocity there, um, but it's it's probably the least exciting of, of the lot. Maybe that's why they left it to the end. Um, but you know, nine out of ten isn't isn't bad batting average, frankly. Um, yeah. So that's the uh, the last uh, effect there, the punch effect. So that's the effect operator and the ten different effects that sit inside it. So really. Uh, as I said at the start, really we're getting 10 new operator modes here, uh, and that's really quite <laughs> exciting. Um, there's a bunch of new sound design uh, opportunities, new sounds that we can coax from the Op 6 that we simply couldn't uh, do on the previous version of the firmware. And again, uh, even for the effects like the uh, phaser and, 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 the, and the delay and like, we shouldn't underestimate how powerful being able to apply an effect to part of the sound and not the rest of the sound uh, can actually be something again that we didn't have access to when we only had the uh, master effects as well so yeah all in all nice one korg well done um oscillator sync approved so as always thank you so much for watching and sticking with me till the end of the video which i know is probably very long again um uh, if you did enjoy the video, if you've made it this far, then please, uh, if you could take the time to give it a thumbs up, that's always massively appreciated. And make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of the upcoming uh, synth fun that uh, is on the way. And there are some particularly fun things on the way. Um, let me tell you uh, more of that when I can tell you about it. Uh, otherwise, um, until next time, uh, take care of yourselves and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.